I'm all for development. I'm just not for paying for somebody else's development. A massive development meant to improve one Portland neighborhood. But the city is asking long-standing local businesses to pitch in millions of dollars. And tonight, K2 is on your side pressing the city for answers and what the business owners think is fair. Thanks for joining us at 11 tonight, everybody. I'm Steve Dunn. It is normal for the Bureau of Transportation to update sewers, streets, and sidewalks. But in one Portland neighborhood in North Portland, they're asking businesses to pay for it. K2's Victor Park joins us live in studio with this K2 investigation. Victor, some businesses say this will drive them right out. Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, Steve, I've been digging into this story for several weeks now. What I found is that the city wants to improve the Cathedral Park neighborhood. There is an out-of-state developer planning to build a massive project, but before they can start building, the city has to lay down some groundwork, and that is what they are asking local improvements or rather local businesses to pitch in for those businesses that have been there for decades. Drive down Crawford Street in the Cathedral Park area of North Portland, and you are in for a bumpy ride. Potholes and the broken sidewalks make the area unappealing. I'm not against cleaning this area up. St. John's Truck and Equipment and St. John's Marine are two businesses still operating along this stretch of Crawford. The rest are abandoned. The city of Portland wants to change that. It is called a local improvement district or LID. This is a division for uh, what would be built along the Willamette River. In May, really Peabot told city leaders in right order here. to bring new development uh, like housing units and retail, uh, the city needs to build new sidewalks, streets, and update a new sewer line. The cost, over $15 million. Now this is where it becomes a problem for some. For 20 years, we're going to have to cough up uh, about half the income we drive off the property. That 15 million would be spread among commercial property owners in the area like Kevin Meter. It was kind of a shock to us because we didn't hear anything about it until after the plans had already been laid out. All we'd get is a nicer street and that's it. And we don't need that. We have very low traffic coming to our property. Brandon Peterson is a mechanic at St. John's Marine. We shouldn't have to pay for a road a block away. I shouldn't have to pay for railroad crossings three blocks away. In January, Peabot sent him a letter saying he would have to pay $12,600 a month for 20 years. That totals up to $3 million. We don't even pull that kind of income. You know, there's a couple of us here working. You know, that's, that's not going to make it for us. It, it'll absolutely close us down. You feel like they're trying to drive you out? Yes, yes. They're trying to tax us out of everything. St. John's Truck and Equipment says they were being asked to pay $7,000 a month for 20 years. The two feel what the city is asking for is simply not fair. And so I sent numerous emails to Peabot and made several calls. I asked Peabot, how is that amount decided when it is not something they can even afford? Peabot sent me this statement, which reads in part, those numbers are being greatly reduced and we expect them to be in the range of 26% to 70% less than those figures. Doesn't the business bear some sort of responsibility to... Uh, pitch in for that considering that they may still benefit when uh, Peabot asked what I would like I said draw both of these businesses out of the district uh, knowing full well that that's not what we were going to get so uh, it really does sort of come back to making sure that they just pay their fair share uh, and not anything beyond that. Now, according to this map sent to local businesses, where I'm standing at is a street Peabot wants to pave. But as you can see, it would require a lot of work. Take a look at these bushes over here. You see, it is the cost of it that is causing some of these businesses to become very worrisome. Sean Jillians represents the businesses and hopes the city will pull back on that plan. We'll be submitting that. I think Peabot will be discussing that with the council. In the meantime, Meter says he does support improving the area. I just think it, the cost of it should be borne by the people that are going to profit from it. 
Okay, so I've reached out numerous times to Commissioner and mayoral candidate Mingus Maps, who oversees Peabot. I ask why is it such a high cost for being that are being is being spread onto these small tax paying businesses? I'm still waiting for Maps' office to answer in an on camera interview. City Council plans to vote on the project on July 10th. Steve. Very interesting story. Before you go, tell us why the city can't afford the entire cost of this. Yeah, in fact, the city says paving every street in Portland would cost billions of dollars. That is why they form a local improvement district. The property owner usually only pays the direct expenses, such as engineering, financing, and the payments to the contractor. But in most cases, the city uh, absorbs the direct, indirect costs. We'll keep us posted, Victor. Thank you for that tonight.